It's been 15 years since the release of the first Gran Turismo, which revolutionised racing video games and Gran Turismo 6 has been announced and is on its way. But I've been on the long haul. I started with Gran Turismo 2, it was my first game ever actually, and Gran Turismo 3 A spec, Gran Turismo 4, Tourist Trophy, which I got recently, which is really good. I'll review it some other time. And of course, Gran Turismo 5 and its prologue. Ah, oh, and there's concept, I don't have that. Whatever, anyway, the subject of today's review is Gran Turismo 3. And while it may be the most limited of the Gran Turismos, it's just got something special about it. There's something about GT3. Something that just feels right. It may not have the most cars, in fact I think it actually has the least cars in the series. Maybe slightly more than GT1, but far less than 2, 4 and 5 and 6. It doesn't have the most tracks either, though it does have some of the best tracks. But I don't know. It's just something. We'll explore that something later. For now, it's the intro. This is the PAL version, or in other words, the one that has a better intro than the American version. Uh, the American one, the music cuts in halfway, and it's a different song, it doesn't really suit it very well. Oh yeah, and um, if you think this is quiet, don't turn your volume up. If for some reason you just have to skip this, then about the five minute mark should be right. What do you think of that? Oh, also, menu noises. 
I love the many noises in this game. More than just loving the menu noises though, I love this game! And sorry if what I said before made it sound as if this was a small game, no, it's still like a mammoth, huge game. With a lot to do, tons of races, quite a few cars, and lots of tracks to race them on. Lots of really good tracks that have, well a lot of them have sadly been culled from GT5. I hope they bring them all back, and not as DLC, I hate DLC. Anyway, whatever. This is Gran Turismo 3. You can wash your car and change your oil. Changing your oil is good for you. Washing your car is pointless and fun. There are also wheels. But I've already got yellow wheels, so I'm happy. Ah, this is that song that was playing during the intro. I love this song. I love all GT's menu music, it's always great. The in-game racing music is often quite hit and miss, but the menu music never disappoints. There are heaps of events to choose from. This is one specifically for Evo Lancers. So what, I brought an Evo Lancer rally car. That's a fairly reasonable thing to do because you mustn't forget that in GT3, the AI is, well, really tough. Not very intelligent, but just sometimes hard to beat. Actually, that's a bit of an understatement. That's a huge understatement. You pretty much can't beat them fairly on a level playing field because they have the advantage of driving absolutely perfectly when they want to. So, best bet is bash them off the road or take something faster. In-game music, courtesy of Daiki Kasho and a bunch of bands you've never heard of or like. I'm, I'm being a little bit critical with here, I don't know. I, I've heard this song a billion times racing around. You can turn the music off and even choose which songs you want on or off, which is a good thing, because some of them are, well, very unfitting. I usually just turn all the music off, but uh, leave on the little start and ending bits, because they're catchy. And they make you feel good, like this. There are a few things more relieving than hearing that after a really long race. Except for the GT2 victory noise. Man, that's a good noise. If you haven't played GT2, um... Well, I'm not gonna make this sound for you. Just watch my GT2 review. That was an old review. That was ages ago. That was back when I used to actually give scores to things. Okay, anyway, there's this great replay mode where you can... Choose which car you're following and put various dials on screen, or just choose other modes like this crazy music video editor on crack mode, which takes all these random cuts and blurry cool spinning things and other camera angles that aren't actually possible in real life, and puts lots of crazy filters all over them. Must say though, for 2001, this game looked amazing. Absolutely no other game looked anything like it. Just unparalleled realism. It's aged a little bit since then. Obviously there are games that look more real, like GT4 and GT5. And there's also games that feel more real. This game does feel good to drive, but compared to later GTs, and look at this all of them, it just feels a bit numb. Anyway, there's a wide variety of tuning options, lots of parts to buy, and then you can fiddle around with them, turn on or off assists. Why are they on? I don't play with assists on. Oh well. Gran Turismo 3 A-Spec features a wide variety of tracks, many of which have been removed from later GTs, as I said before. This is Special Stage Route 11 only in the first Gran Turismo and this one. However, the track is so insanely busy with things everywhere that the GT3 engine couldn't quite handle it. It did admirably. I must note that there is no other track in this game with pop-in. It only occurs on this one, but for the most part, you know, draw distance is superb. You can see everything. The road doesn't just suddenly flash into existence before your eyes like it did 
like it did in Gran Turismo 1 and 2. And this combined with the immense visuals and great physics made it THE racing game for several years to come. Also note, widescreen support. Yay! The game also features incredibly hard license tests. Easier than GT2, but still, uh, this is a big wake-up call. I was fairly rusty, and coming back to it, I can't even pass S3 anymore. I know a few years ago, when I used to play this game every day, I got up to S10 and just sort of gave up there. But I forgot to save, so... Oh well. <laughs> Which means I only have the first two S licenses completed. Look, maybe one day I'll get good at this again and make my way up there, finish that S license and finally get that 787B I deserve, but I don't think it's going to happen for some time. Once you get a bit bored of GT mode, should that ever happen, there is Arcade Mode, where you must race on every track, on easy, medium and hard difficulties. And though the hard AI might be able to beat me at many other things, they can't touch me on Rally. I love the rally portion of this game. It just feels good. So you've got a game with fast load times, a lot to do, plenty of cars, well, not by GT standards, but still, plenty of cars, plenty of tracks, a fun rally mode, challenging licenses, what else could it possibly need? Well, awesome two-player. Yes, if you're wondering why the people here are doing so badly, I'll explain. The left one is my hands and is using my weird control scheme and is driving a manual. And the right player is my feet driving an automatic. It's kind of complicated. So, you think you've mastered Gran Turismo 3? Try and beat Kaz's lap time. You won't. Well, not the first time. I can't. Anyway, GT3 is a fantastic game. It'll live on as one of the greatest racing games ever made. I like GT2 a bit more, but still, GT3 is one of my favorites of all time. And I highly recommend it to every human on the planet.